Throughout Family Guy, we've gotten little peeks into some of the characters' futures. Some get married, a few turn into cyborgs, and others mutate into frogs. Ribbity. Most of these probably aren't even canon, but who cares? Let's go through them all anyway and see where everyone ends up. So, let's kick things off with Adam West. Adam West's real-life passing was written into the show, but we have seen one cutaway of a potential future for him. In it, he's telling a story to his grandchildren. And, oh yeah, he's also a wizard. Well, I don't like that story, great-grandpa. But you know what, that really isn't all that crazy considering all of the other insane things that Adam West has done in the show. I'm 95% helium. And personally, I like the idea that the character of Mayor West faked his own death and is now living a wacky life outside of Quahog. It suits him. Bonnie. Starting as a doting and loving wife to Joe, Bonnie's love soon turned to hatred. I'm leaving Joe and moving to Europe. I didn't sign up for this. It seemed like as soon as her baby was born, Bonnie began to despise Joe to the point where she wished nothing more than for him to die. Has Joe died? What? No. But Joe would have the last love as he will get to outlive her and would even take her legs when she passes. Who wears short shorts? I wear short shorts! Brian. So, in Stu and Stewie's excellent adventure, we saw what life was like in Quahog 30 years into the future. And it turns out that Brian is no longer alive. I got into the garbage and ate some chocolate. And it's maybe because of this that in the episode Rich Old Stewie set 50 years into the future, it's revealed that Stewie has kept his doggy alive by inventing a pill. But it turns out that all of this was revealed to be in Stewie's imagination. What the hell is wrong with you? You've been staring at that old man Halloween costume for 30 minutes. Do keep in mind that there are many alternative futures in Family Guy, so they can't all perfectly align. This is unlike the Simpsons futures, which I managed to put in chronological order and make sense of in my video on my other channel, The Simpsons Theory. But when it comes to Family Guy, the writers just don't care about continuity. But again, it's gonna get very repetitive if I have to keep explaining this for every single character. So just remember this little disclaimer for when things get a little bit out of whack. Speaking of which, let's jump to season 19's P Terminator. So in this episode, let's jump to the year 2060. In it, Brian left a snarky comment on one of Stewie's Instagram photos. What the hell? Relax, Stewie, take a joke. Thus causing a rift between them, which sparked a chain of events where Koha became a dystopian war zone, where hundreds of robot versions of Brian and Stewie have turned the town into a wasteland. But then finally, in perhaps the most likely future of the pooch, we see a really sad old blind Brian. And for those of us who have had an elderly dog, this one really does hit too close to home. But putting those emotions to side, I'd like to briefly pause here and say a big thank you to this video sponsor, Private Internet Access VPN. In case you didn't know, a virtual private network, or VPN for short, hides your IP address and safeguards your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel. It's also great for unlocking content from anywhere in the world. For example, on the US Disney Plus, it doesn't have Family Guy or Futurama. But if you open up the private internet access app, switch over to the UK server, then go back to Disney Plus, then up comes all 21 seasons of the show. It's the same with Netflix too. Rick and Morty isn't available on the US Netflix, but if you switch over to the UK server, then you can watch all six seasons. And while it is great for unlocking content, I mostly use it for security. No joke, both my Spotify and Netflix accounts have both been hacked into while I've been using public Wi-Fi's. But if I use private internet access, then it shields my information from snoopers and thieves. And not only is it one of the cheapest, but it also has a strict no logs policy, meaning that they don't hold on to your browsing history or IP address. And a really great thing is that just one subscription gives you access to unlimited devices. And with 30 million downloads, it's one of the most trusted VPNs on the market. So why not give it a go by clicking the link in my pinned comment and get an 83% discount on private internet access. That's just $2.03 a month and you'll also get four extra months completely for free. Thank you so much to Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. Chris Griffin. So what does the future hold for this little glue sniffer? 
Well, in one future, he becomes a cop and marries an overbearing lady called Vanessa. Hi, everybody. Sorry we're late. Stop apologizing. You sound like a woman. And to put it simply, everyone hates her, including Stewie, who even goes back in time to the moment of their wedding and vaporizes her. And you know what? This is kind of sweet because it really shows how much Stewie does actually care for his big brother. But in another reality, instead of becoming an officer of the law, he's a deadbeat whose only accomplishment is getting his little griffin to talk. Who's out there? Settle down, just got some company. Well, aren't you going to introduce me? Which, to be fair, is actually kind of impressive. And in possibly the same timeline, he'll also become a creepy school bus driver. You have a beautiful child, Mrs. Roberts. Thus hinting that Chris will become the new Herbert the Pervert. Get your fat ass back here. And personally, I'm not a big fan of this depressing future for Chris. Most recent episodes have instead shown him to have a real talent for filmmaking. So hopefully at one point we get a future cutaway of him being a director or someone a bit more creative. I mean, if Bart Simpson can become the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, then why can't Chris have a brighter future too? Also, in another not-so-positive future cutaway from season 11, a middle-aged Chris has his parents' heads mounted on the wall. Which kind of tracks when you realise that voice actor Seth Green based Chris's voice on Buffalo Bill from The Silence of the Lambs. That actor Ted Levine who plays Buffalo Bill <laughs> is the creepiest character ever. And as for his far distant future, Chris will outlive everyone and become a cyborg. Cleveland. In the Stewie Griffin Untold Story special, we see Cleveland living in a retirement home along with the rest of the gang, and his already slow speech has gotten even slower. Hello. And in the episode of Rich Old Stewie, it shows Cleveland spending his twilight years on hold to United Airlines. Thank you for remaining on the line. All right, you just bought yourself another year. Consuela. The character of Consuela's sole purpose in the show is to be a catchphrase sprouting Mexican stereotype. Lemon pledge, no, no. <laughs> See? But despite this, she's been able to make the most of her short screen time, as I covered in her very own timeline. But the only glimpse we saw of her future was in P Terminator, where a robot version of her is sent back in time to take out Brian. Dr. Hartman. And speaking of that very episode, a robot version of the Doctor was also sent back in time. And aside from this, the only Doctor of Quahog has a very ambiguous future, but in Richard Stewie, we do see that his son comes to old Peter Griffin's aid, and he just so happens to look and sound exactly like his dad. Well, actually, I'm Dr. Hartman's son. Dr. Hartman's son? Joe. As I mentioned earlier, in addition to getting his late wife's legs, Joe will also get a pair of shiny new robot legs when he gets upgraded into a Robocop. Lois. Despite how toxic their marriage got, Lois is still married to Peter in every single Family Guy future. And in Stu and Stewie's excellent adventure, their adult kids convince them to move into a retirement home. But while Lois gets to reunite with Peter's old friends, none of her gal powers from Spooner Street are anywhere to be seen. And even in her ripe old age, Lois is still able to recognize that Pablo was really her son Stewie from the past. Do you think I don't remember my own little Stewie? You clever, clever shrew. And it's after this moment that Lois gives them a loan in order for her little Stewie to return back to his own time. But while Lois may have supported her youngest child in this reality, the same can't be said for rich old Stewie. Here, a 90-year-old Lois schemed with the rest of her family to get a piece of Stewie's fortune. And always being the one that is one step ahead, Stewie blows up the entire house and kills everyone inside. Meg. So, after years of constant abuse from her family, does Meg have a bright future ahead of her? Well, no. Not really. In a cutaway gag from season 12, we see a middle-aged Meg hang out at a bar all by herself on Christmas Day. Merry Christmas, Meg. And in Rich Old Stewie, when Meg is 68, she'll run a small private security business out in the desert, but really, she just tests the bulletproof vests. Oh, yeah. <coughs> I guess after all those years of being a punching bag, she really grew up to be a glutton for punishment. 
In fact, the only future we've seen where Meg seems the most content is in Stewie Griffin, The Untold Story. In it, we learn that after college, Meg underwent gender-affirming surgery and now goes by Ron. It's Meg. She had a sex change right after college. Wow, she went to college? Personally, I feel that Meg has had a lot of developments in recent years and has slowly moved further and further away from being a single joke character. And seeing as she has competed in the Winter Olympics, maybe just maybe she'll become a professional athlete in the future. But knowing Family Guy, I seriously doubt they'll ever give her a happy ending. Peter Griffin over the years, we've had a few glimpses into what Peter's life looks like in the future. In one cutaway gag, we see Peter caring for two tropical fish who repay the favor when they get older. I don't care what it costs, just make this man well again! Thank you, fish. And in another cutaway, we see that Peter grows old with his fishing friend Larry. This is the last time I'll ever see you. Bye. And in P-Terminator, a robot replica was sent back in time from the year 2060. And when Peter is in his mid-70s, he hasn't changed at all. Oh no, I broke my hip! You need some help, Dad? Nah, I'm good. And finally, in Rich Old Stewie, when Peter is in his late 90s, he has diabetes after three ice cream stores open in his town. And when it seems like he's coming to the end of his life, he implores his son Stewie to help contribute his massive wealth to the family, only for it to turn out to be a ruse. We did it! We got him! Quagmire Despite his youthful appearance, Glenn is actually 61 years old in the main timeline. What's your secret? Uh, carrots. Sometimes I grind them up into juice or just eat them raw. And luckily for him, when he's over 110 years old, he'll still be looking great. Yeah, I'm basically exactly the same, except I pretty much only talk about ice cream now. But in another reality, he's not so fresh-faced. As when Koholt becomes an apocalyptic wasteland in Back to the Pilot, he'll mutate into a frog and be vaporized by Cyborg Joe. But the future that Quagmire himself envisions having is in Season 20's First Blood, where he gets a Christmas card every single year from his real estate agent Bob McKay. But once he found out that Bob had died, the elder Glenn is devastated. Seamus Despite being 95% wood, missing one eye, and most of his teeth, Seamus won't let that stop him from living life to the fullest. Because in recent seasons, Seamus was shown winning an Oscar for the best screenplay. And in the future, he'll become so famous he'll be a celebrity host for The Muppet Show. Mr. Seamus, five minutes to showtime, Mr. Seamus. Stewie since Dewey is just a baby throughout the main series, his future is referenced far more than any other character in the show, and to say that it's all over the place is a big understatement. I mean, even to the point where his physical size as an adult is a bit weird. So, let's unpack it. We see a teenage Stewie getting high in season 4. Then, in a cutaway gag in season 17, a young adult Stewie gives a best man speech at Brian's wedding to a guy named Evan. Why am I gay in this? That's the end of the show, we sometimes do something silly here. Now, let's move on to Stewie's sexuality, which has been a topic of debate amongst fans for years. You see, Stewie has shown some interest in girls, like when he fell in love with Susie and that time where he became a boyfriend to Penelope. And in one future flash-forward scene in season two, he'll get married to a woman. What do we know in Larchmont? My sister-in-law. Oh, yes, right, right, Carol. Yes, that's right. But he's also been shown to be attracted to men too. Bing bong, hello! So it's no surprise that Stewie has also fantasized about a future with guys too. Like in this season 19 cutaway. We've come a long way. We've come a lot of ways. And to add to this, in the episode P Terminator, set in 2060, a past Dewey asks his future self if he has a wife, to which he replies, Oh man, I so wanted to, it's just this war and whatnot, you know? No, no, I totally get it. However, Stewie's future sexuality was seemingly confirmed in a season 20 cutaway when we see a much older, openly gay Stewie surrounded by his grandkids. How did you and other granddaddy meet? That's a story for when you're older. But the adult version of Stewie who gets the most screen time is from parts 2 and 3 of Stewie Griffin The Untold Story. Baby Stewie manages to take a peek at his future and it's not so impressive. Instead of world domination, this middle-aged Stewie lives in a crummy apartment, works in a circuit shack, and has never, never had sex with a woman. But now you're telling me I'm a 35-year-old parade magazine reading virgin? But then again, this is most probably because he's gay. 
However, Stewie's most successful future was seen in Richard Stewie, when he's 50 years old and will become a renowned inventor, creating world-saving things like the wipeless dump and a life-extending pill for Brian. And finally, the oldest we've seen Stewie was in Two Cutaways from Season 12, where in one he complains how music was far better back in his day. Back in my day, we had Katy Perry, Justin Bieber. That was real music. And in another, where he can't understand how to video call with his grandchild. What movie is this? It's not a movie, it's your grandson! Tom Tucker. Quahog's most popular news anchor is still doing what he does best, many, many decades later. The only difference being is that he now delivers the news with his big old giant man eyebrows. You won't hear anything I'm saying because they're so distracting. Trisha Takanawa. There's not too much to say here except that TV reporter Trisha will always apparently look youthful. And so, we've come to the end of the video, and if you think I've missed a character, it's simply because we haven't seen much, if any, of their future. So do let me know in the comments whose future you'd like to see in the show or your predictions of what their future may be. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.